Hello friends and it's Funky Play Brothers and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube and today I'm reading part 8 of Five Nights at Freddy's Tales from the Pizzaplex Tiger Rock by Scott Cawthon, Adrian Wagger, and Kelly Parra. Last time we left off, Kay uh, just got out of the VR booth where Tiger Rock was trying to find him. <clears throat> Are you sure you're okay son? His dad asked. The already uh, deep lines between his uh, brows were bunched. Like Kay's mom, Kay's dad wasn't a warrior, but he had a sixth sense when it came to an actual problem. When there was one, he liked being proactive about it, solving the issue instead of uh, fretting over it. Kay knew his dad's job was stressful, and Kay tried not to add to his dad's load. I'm fine, Dad, he said, just tired. Kay's dad rubbed his wide jaw. Okay, you'd tell us if something was wrong, right? Sure, Dad, Kay said. He ho he hoped that his laid-back parents wouldn't worry, wouldn't worry, w weren't worried enough to notice that he was lying. As Kay returned to the house, he heard his mom begin the story about Elliot and the hippopotamus he met by the river. Kay closed the sliding door, glass door behind him, and shuffled down the hallway to his room. As he went, he scanned the family photos that lined the hall. His pace slowed as he gazed at the photos. Seeing all the images of him and his parents and uh, Milia laughing and having a great time helped to erase what he experienced in the VR booth. This is reality, he reminded himself. Tiger Rock isn't real. He reached his room. He entered it and closed the door behind him. He leaned against the door and took a deep breath. It was only 9 p.m., too early to go to bed, but he didn't feel like doing anything. Kay crossed his tight crossed his tidy room and flopped on the soft gray baboon comforter, comforter spread neatly on his mattress. He looked up at the ceiling and watched the curved blades of his distant koa fan lazily swirl overhead. The fan was made of soft swish, made a soft swishing sound that blended with the sound of the breeze in the trees outside his window. Kay's room was a big square space with, that had a a sigil rug over croak flooring, the same flooring that was in the entire house. All his simple furniture was made of reclaimed wood, mostly scavenged from old barns behind torn down, being torn down to build new ones. He looked. He liked his rustic platform bed, his large de desk and shelves, and the tall dresser that sat between his closet and the picnic window that looked out into the home side yard. He'd hung a hummingbird free feeder in the white pine outside his window, and he spent lots of time watching the colorful little birds whizzing in to get some sugar water and streaking away again to disappear in the azale bushes at the base of the trees. To Asher and Todd, whose rooms look like those of normal 11-year-old boys, Kay was a little strange for caring how his room looked. Dude, your room is like something in a magazine, Todd often commented. Todd was fascinated by the mostly bare walls. The only thing Kay had on the walls was a framed photo of his family, a painting of uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne, one of the in, 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 inactive volcanoes on uh, Hau, Heihu, and one of... Uh, Mm, Melia's drawings, which depicted Elliot the elephant giving Kay a ride. Kay's shelves held ordered, orderly rows of books, his rock collection, and a couple wood carvings, one of an eagle and one of a dolphin. Kay had done the carvings himself. They were a little wonky, but he was happy with them, because he was still learning. Todd was also obsessed with the way Kay's room smelled. Whenever he visited, he sniffed the air like a hound following the scent. The, aroma, the aromas were coconut and lime. Kay's mom made her own cleaning product and chose a scent that reminded her of home. After watching a fan go around for a few dozen times and enjoying the familiar coconut set of his room, Kay sighed and stood. He crossed to the double-hung window and looked at the hummingbird feeder. Sometimes his favorite hummingbird, Barry, so named because of his raspberry red tail feathers, came around in the twilight, but not tonight. The feeder was empty. Kay's window was partly opened. He pushed it up 
all the way and leaned out to see if he could spot Barry in the azales. The sun had disappeared behind the hills now, but its glow re still remain remained. There was enough light for Kay to see, although the bushes were already hiding in the coming night's shadows. No, Barry. But wait, what was that moving uh, be just beyond the azales? Some, something light-colored and fluttering. Kay could see the movement through the bushes' tiny leaves. He squinted and leaned even further out the window. For reasons he didn't understand, he felt prickles at the base of his neck, and his heart rate sped up. It's probably just a cat or something, he thought. The thing, whatever it was, moved again. Kay uh, sucked in his breath. It wasn't a cat. It was an owl, a large white owl. The owl was sitting on the ground, ang angled just a bit away from the side of, the, of Kay's house. Its eyes were closed. The tingle on Kay's neck crept up into his hair. It felt like ants were crawling on his scalp. A, stre a streak of the sun remaining light stretched through the bushes and landed on the owl. Kay could see clearly that the owl was no normal owl. The light reflected off the owl's feathers. Owl feathers didn't react to light that way. Metal did. Kay was looking at a metallic owl, once sculpted like in the animatronics in the future Pizzaplex. Kay swallowed hard and watched the owl. It wasn't moving. Was it just some kind of toy or something, or maybe a new garden sculpture his mom had gotten? Even as Kay dismissed his, the thought, he, the owl's head turned ever so slightly. They had rotated the owl's face so it was directly full on toward Kay now. The owl's eyes opened. Kay cried out and whim, uh, whipped his upper body back into his room. As he did, he dumped his head onto the uh, window frame. The impact jarred the window, and it dropped quickly. The window slid completely down, catching Kay's arm between the bottom of the window and the still. Because Kay had hung, uh, lunged back through the window so fast, his m momentum kept him going even farther, at, even after his arm got caught. His arm stationary at the window didn't come with the rest of his body, which was trying to turn, tumble into his room. Pain flashed in Kay's shoulder. It felt like his arm was being pried from his socket. Tears sprang to his eyes as he shuffled to his feet to get his balance. He grappled, he grabbed for his dresser, catching himself so he didn't continue to fall away from where his arm was caught, was caught in the window. Getting his teeth, Kay managed, uh, grid, gritting his teeth, Kay managed to write himself and use, uh, uh, write himself and he used his free hand to lift the window off his trapped arm. As soon as the window was up, he retra retracted his arm and rubbed the spot on his forehead that had taken the brunt of the heavy window's frame. Then he rotated his arm to make sure he hadn't done any major damage to his shoulder. He hadn't. His shoulder was sore, but his arm was moving okay. For several seconds, Kay clutched his dresser and tried to steady his bra breathing. His heart was uh, thurming so loudly that it, that's the beat, that its beat was all he could hear. When Kay's heart started to settle down, he inhaled and looked, took a step back toward the window. Leaving the window closed, he pressed his cheek uh, to its cold glass and looked down. The owl was gone, but Kay didn't feel relieved. The unease that had been with him all day had now re, uh, re had now uh, ratcheted rat had now ratcheted up a notch. No, make uh, no make that several notches. Because the owl had crouched in the bushes below Kay's room was definitely not the some toy or yard sculpture when it had opened its eyes. Kay had clearly seen that the owl had one emerald green and one bright blue eye. One Sunday afternoon, one Sunday afternoon, Kay and his friends usually went on quests when the weather was good. The quests were something Kay's dad had come up with. How about I hide something somewhere in the town? Kay's dad had suggested one afternoon when Kay and Asher and Todd were hanging around bored, complaining that they had nothing to do. I'll give you a clue that will lead you to another couple clues, Kay's dad continued. 
and you can follow the clues to find the treasure. Todd, whose own parents were totally workaholics, who tended to ignore their only child most of the time, had thought his uh, this was rad. And Asher had gotten into it too. The day he started the regular routine, they followed uh, followed now. Kay's dad had was a genius with clues. They had to ride their bikes all over town to find the next clue, and then and the next until they found the treasure which would be anything from cookies to concert tickets to a CD. Once they were, once when the clues were really hard, they'd found 30, three $50 bills in a little wooden chest hidden in a nook at the base of the clock tower in the tower square, town square. And Kay was still jittery that the day after he'd seen the owl. He had gone straight to bed. But he didn't lay lay awake for a long time before finally drifting into a restless sleep. All night long, the owl had haunted his dreams. So much so that Kay had used his wake myself trick three times. His eyes were scratchy from lack of sleep when he met Asher and Todd from his, uh, on his front porch to study the first clue of the, of the day's quest. It was a nice day. Spring had finally settled in for good and the, and the days were getting warmer. The soft blue sky overhead held wispy white clouds. Normally, Kay would have been happy to be outside on a day like today. But right now, he the open sky somehow felt threatening. He, he felt exposed. He kept rotating his head, searching the neighborhood for anything that seemed out of place. Kay didn't see anything that shouldn't have been there. The mostly one-story house that lined his narrow street looked as they were as they always did on the day on a day like today their windows sparkling and their dark roofs shimmering in the sun the bushes were thick and have healthy the driveway he driveways held the usual airy array of sedans and SUVs as was common on week uh, weekends several people were moving their lawn move, mowing their lawns a few children played in the yards or ran up and down the sidewalks. The air smelled like fresh grass clippings, and the screams of little kids pierced through the roar of the lawn mowing engines. And that's where we'll stop. Hopefully, next time we'll find out if Tiger Rock, aka the Mimic, can transform into animals or something, or if Kay is just imagining things. So, friends, thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Follow us on Twitter at the Funky Play Bros. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Funky Play Brothers. Support our vlog at Cash App with the dollar sign Funky Play Brothers. So we can have more unboxings, more taste tests, more adventures, more monies, and for support. Thank you for watching. Bye.